There are multiple ways to transfer a file between two hosts on the same network. One of these protocols is studied in this example, and that is SMB, Server Message Block. This communication protocol provides shared access to files, printers, and serial ports between endpoints on a network. Hello everyone, I welcome you all to a new video. In this video, we are going to exploit a vulnerable machine that consists of an SMB protocol. We mostly see the SMB services running on Windows machines. During scanning, we will typically see port 445 TCP open on the target, reserved for the SMB protocol. Usually, SMB runs at the application or presentation layers of the OSI model. Due to this, it relies on lower level protocols for transport. The transport layer protocol that Microsoft SMB protocol is most often used with is NetBIOS over TCP IP. This is why, during scans, we will most likely see both protocols with open ports running on the target. We will see this during the enumeration phase of the write up. Using the SMB protocol, an application, or the user of an application, can access files at a remote server, along with other resources such as printers. Thus, a client application can read, create, and update files on the remote server. It can also communicate with any server program that is set up to receive an SMB client request. Despite having the ability to secure access to the share, a network administrator can sometimes make mistakes, and accidentally, allow logins without any valid credentials, or use either guest accounts or anonymous logons. We will witness this in the following sections. Enumeration Firstly, we have to start our machine by clicking Spawn Machine. Here on my screen, you can find out the dancing IP address. As always, we are going to start by scanning the target once we are connected to the VPN. Now run nmap-sv, followed by the IP address of the target. By running this command, you can scan all of the ports and display service versions for each of them. As previously mentioned, we observe that port 445 TCP for SMB is up and running, which means that we have an active share that we could potentially explore. Think of this share as a folder that can be accessed over the internet. In order to do so, we will need the appropriate services and scripts to be installed on your system. In order to successfully enumerate share content on the remote system, we can use a script called SMB Client. If the script is not present on your machine, then you can install it by typing sudo apt-get install SMB Client. It may take time to complete the installation process. Our next step is to start enumerating the contents of the share found on our target in both cases. Before that let me find out more about the capabilities of this script alongside its usage using hyphen H. Here, we are going to use hyphen L to select the targeted host for the connection request. Let me clear this, and input a command that will help me to interact with the server. Now run, SMB client, hyphen L, then specify the target IP. SMB client will attempt to connect to the remote host and check if there is any authentication required. If there is, it will ask you for a password for your local username. We should take note of this. If we do not specify a specific username to the SMB client when attempting to connect to the remote host, it will just use your local machine's username. That is the one you are currently logged into your machine with. As here you can see the local username is workgroup forward slash Mr. Dev. This is because SMB authentication always requires a username, so by not giving it one explicitly to try to log in with, it will just have to pass your current local username to avoid throwing an error with the protocol. Nevertheless, 
Let us use our local username since we do not know about any remote usernames present on the target host that we could potentially log in with. Next up, after that, we will have to provide the password to get the connection back from the server. In this case, we do not have such credentials, so we will be trying to perform either guest authentication or anonymous authentication. Any of these will result in us logging in without knowing a proper username and password combination and seeing the files stored on the share. Let us proceed to try that. We leave the password field blank, simply hitting enter to tell the script to move along. As you can see that there are four separate shares are displayed. Let us go through each of them and see what they mean. Admin dollar, administrative shares are hidden network shares created by the Windows NT family of operating systems that allow system administrators to have remote access to every disk volume on a network connected system. These shares may not be permanently deleted but may be disabled. C dollar, administrative share for the C drive disk volume. This is where the operating system is hosted. IPC dollar, the interprocess communication share. Used for interprocess communication via name pipes and is not part of the file system. Work shares, work shares is known as a custom share. Foothold. Now, we will try to connect to each of the shares one by one. We will use the same tactic as before. Attempting to log in without the proper credentials to find and properly configured permissions on any of these shares. First, let us try the admin dollar when using SMB client. The NT status access denied is output, letting us know that we do not have the proper credentials to connect to the share. We will follow up with a C dollar administrative share. Now try with IPC. As you can see, we got a connection. But IPC does contain any valuable files, that's why it is fully a waste for us. Last chance. We proceed with attempting to log into the custom workshares SMB share. This seems to be human made, thus prone to misconfiguration. Success. The WorkShares SMB share was purely configured, allowing us to log in without the appropriate credentials. We can see our terminal prod changed to SMB, letting us know that our shell is now interacting with the service. We can use the help command to see what we can do within the shell. From the output, we can notice that most of the commands we are used to in Linux are present. We will be using ls, cd, get, and exit. Typing in the ls command will show us two directories, one for amy.j and one for james.p. Now, change the directory to amy.j and find out is there. There is a file, let's download it using the git command. This file is now saved inside the location where we ran our smb client command from. Let us continue looking for other valuable files in james.p's directory. Navigating to it, we can find the flag.txt file. Now, retrieve the file using the git command. After retrieving this file, we can use the exit command or you can use control plus C to quit the shell and check the files we just retrieved. Once the SMB shell is killed, we can read the two documents. Let's read them with the help of the cat command. Now copy the flag, and paste it to owning the dancing machine, before that you have to solve all these questions. You can find these tasks on my blog. If you have any doubts, or queries about my video, just give me a comment in below comments section.